Welcome to a combination. Salty Takeaways, Bitter Ends, and a bit of a twos review to wrap things up this go-around. Let's talk a little bit about the 2-1 loss by Atlanta United in Toronto against Toronto FC. And then we will finish up with your comments on the match as well as uh, a couple of highlights from the Atlanta United 2 match in Oakland where there was a moment, and we'll talk about that moment coming up in just a little bit. So let's start off with uh, Atlanta United and Toronto FC. Obviously, there were two pieces of news coming out, one even before the match started, was the injury to Brooks Lennon. Don't know a whole lot about it, but he was literally carried off the field during pregame warm-ups. And uh, for those of you that reached out on Twitter, shot us a picture of Brooks being on crutches after the match was over. Thanks for that heads up and uh, full credit to that. And the other is Luis Arujo after just getting beaten up. And the uh, once again, the uh, inconsistency in delivering fouls and or cards in the match, once again coming up to the fore as a constant element in Major League Soccer this year, and specifically since we're talking about Atlanta United, uh, five fouls committed on Luis Arujo, and uh, there were points where Luis Arujo got a yellow card, and I'd love to know what happened there, uh, what the rationale was for that particular yellow card on and uh, coming together with uh, Arujo and Quentin Westberg. But uh, Luis gets one of the yellows, and so we're just left scratching our head on that one. So let's take a peek at the numbers and look at the lineups and give you the uh, final numbers according to our friends at SofaScore. A lot of sixes and sevens across the board for uh, Atlanta United. Joseph had a 6.8. Uh, Ronaldo Cisneros a 6.4. Franco Ibarra a 6.6. Caleb Wiley and Aid McFadden both 6.5s. And we'll talk about Aid McFadden in just a little bit, having uh, filled in for Brooks uh, for Brooks Lennon on the day. Sevens on the day. Luis Arujo with a 7.7. Marcelina Moreno a 7.6. M.O. and George Campbell, 7.1s. Alan Franco a 7.3. Rocco Rios Novo a 6.4 on the day. And other sixes on the board were the four substitutes that were used by Gonzalo Pineda. Uh, Mateus Asetiu had a 6.4. He got uh, about t- uh, 30 minutes of run. Uh, subbing for Franco Ibarra, Marsadic, Machop Chol, Dom Dwyer each came in for the final 10. Sadic a 6.9, Dom Dwyer a 6.5, Machop Chol a 6.2. And uh, Abby, I know that we're uh, you had some questions about some specific players. We'll get into those specific players when we go through the stats uh, individually as well. Uh, ball possession went to Atlanta United 56-44. Total shots were even at 15, 4-2 to two for uh, Toronto for shots on target. Six blocks on the day for Atlanta United. Corners were about even, 7-6 to Toronto. Uh, Atlanta had three offside calls to two. 13 fouls for Atlanta United, 12 for Toronto FC. Once again, I just leave that evidence as specified right there. Two yellow cards on each side. You had uh, two saves for Rocco Rios Novo, who got the nod again this time around, and one save. For Westberg on the day, passing, it was a 388, a 466 for Atlanta United, 83%, 57% on long balls, four crosses on the day, more than, more than three that Toronto FC completed, and passing 283 of 364 for Toronto FC, 78%, 22 long balls on the day at 42%. Dribbles at Land United, 12 of 21 successful dribbles on the day to 6 of 15 for a Toronto FC. Also on the board, it was 16 interceptions, 17 clearances for Atlanta United, 18 to 15 when it came to tackles for Toronto FC. When you look at the uh, details on the match, Luis Arugio, Marcelino Moreno were the ones who got the yellow cards in the second half for uh, Atlanta United. Carlos Salcedo for time-wasting and Jaden Nelson for a foul in the first half were the two yellows for Toronto FC. When you look at individuals on the day, obviously a lot of eyes drawn to Aiden McFadden for his work with being thrown into the lineup after the pregame injury to Brooks Lennon. You've got to give Aiden McFadden a lot of credit. And Emilio will get into your comment as well. I guess this is almost leading into it as we're talking about it. Uh, Luis Arujo with Atlanta United down 1-0 after only eight minutes. Then uh, with the goal by Jonathan Osorio, it was uh, 1-1 in the 57th. Franco Ibarra with the assist. Luis Arujo working his way down the right-hand side. 
and you knew at one point he was going to want to do something with his left. A little bit of an extra drag, cuts it back to his left, puts it in the net behind Quentin Westberg, and that tied it at one. And then once again with uh, action working both ways, 12 minutes to go, Ralph Prizo gets the game winner, getting it past Rocco Rios Novo for the 2-1 final after uh, six minutes were tacked on the board. So after the match, looking at how things stand with Atlanta United and Toronto FC in the Eastern Conference. Right now they're 10th and 11th, one point separating. Atlanta United still has a couple of matches in hand above, with folks that are above them. Uh, two matches uh, in hand with Orlando City. So once again, you look at Atlanta United at 19 points and Toronto FC at now 5-3-8 and eight with 18 points right now in the Eastern Conference. That's a quick look at numbers before we get into questions and answers and anything specifically. Uh, getting into Twitter, let's start with uh, FC Waffle uh, and your thought about Tiago Almada. And I will take it in two separate directions. One, I'm fairly certain that the conversations once the uh, red card was handed down inside the locker room and training facility and what have you were that you just can't do that. You cannot, you can't touch an official. And to the larger point here, the fact that once again we look at the iniquity of punishment, the inequality of punishment, iniquity, inequality, uh, the inconsistency, let's go with that word, the inconsistency of punishments when it comes to uh, what pro decides they want to do. And then tacking two more games on top of the original one for the red card. I think that that's probably the, the part of the issue. At least it should be the issue here going forward. Uh, yes, it would have been nice to have Tiago Almada in this match, but the game plan that uh, we saw with Atlanta United, especially in the second 45, and really after the first 25 minutes, where it took uh, Atlanta United a little while to get the engine turned on, uh, I think that once again, what you've seen with... Uh, Cisneros out wide with Moreno and Aruju and Joseph. I think it's something that really can can function very well. And then you'll add Tiago Almada to the mix by the time we get to the NYC match. And you really can create problems for folks offensively. But to your point about Tiago Almada, no, it's not. It, no, it is something he should not have done. But at the same time, getting two additional games when uh, Pro and and the uh, the disciplinary committee can't seem to make up their mind and have some kind of consistency when it comes to situations like this. I think that, to me, is the larger problem in all of this. Uh, Emilio, uh, you watched the match. What stood out to me? Uh, I think Aiden McFadden did, being pressed into service. I think Luis Arujo did without question, considering uh, how incredibly talented and you get to see his imagination and artistry. I think that that's uh, stuff that we really get to see a lot of. I think that Rocco Rios Novo, was very confident in net tonight for Toronto FC, for Atlanta United against Toronto FC. And so you're seeing that kind of confidence for someone who's been placed into a situation and is winning the job and has wanted them back-to-back -back weeks. Uh, I liked what I saw in the second half from George Campbell, not being afraid to go from one side of the field to the other on big switches because that seemed to give Atlanta United the space that they were looking for to try to create. So I think that those, for me, were uh, a couple of things that, that stood out for me. You look at, and that was uh, pretty much, for the most part, what stood out to me. A couple of individuals, like I said, Aid McFadden being thrown in, Rocco, uh, Luis, and moments with George Campbell at the back. And remember, and Caleb Wiley once again continuing to, to mature as well, the, the back five that you have for Atlanta United right now, the average age is 21 years old. And... You look at what they're able to do and the confidence that is being instilled in them by Gonzalo Pineda and the coaching staff on a weekly basis, and I think that there's a lot to build from. So uh, a couple of individuals, Emilio, and just kind of sitting there and working its way forward in a very difficult situation. Uh, obviously, once again, we'll keep an eye on Luis Arruju and, and uh, have not heard any news from uh, about Brooks Lennon, but we'll keep you posted on that as well. But Luis got beat up in Toronto and once again we talk about inequality or inconsistency and when your front four is getting beaten up and there's no fouls being called and very few cards then you, you get uh, once again up front and center what we're seeing with uh, referees in Major League Soccer and Pro. 
Uh, Megan Garrison, salty takeaway is that our defense is struggling, and I can't wait for our new signing to be able to play. I know that a lot of folks are looking at uh, Juan Joe Parata and his experience at the back and hoping that it will help. But once again, just know that the job will not be handed to Parata. It will be something that he will have to earn with everyone else uh, that is there that is a part of this. Once again, we've seen Alan Franco and we've seen Caleb Wiley. You know that once uh, you look at an Andrew Gutman and what we've been able to see from him, but the back line there in Toronto with uh, Caleb Wiley and George Campbell and Alan Franco and Aiden McFadden once again was somewhat makeshift. But I think that once again you work Monday through Friday in a situation and then don't discount the work that the three of them did specifically with Atlanta United too. So there was some familiarity there. Uh, It's just once again getting familiar with one another in an MLS game state. I think that that's just – uh, the difficulties of having to navigate injuries and, and being placed in situations that are difficult. And then, uh, Megan, your your second point, uh, I will say that uh, you are not the only person that has voiced that opinion on social media uh, about uh, Atlanta United. And so uh, that's pretty much all I'm going to say about that particular topic, but you are not the only one that has been uh, having that conversation on, on social media. Uh, Michael Valverde, uh, loved how Jason was able to manage his frustrations as TSC hacked our front forward every turn. Yes, they did. And the ref gave a yellow to Luis. And that, to me, once again, is something that I fail to understand. And it goes to the inconsistency that we're talking about with Major League Soccer. And I'm talking bigger picture here. I'm not just necessarily talking about tonight. Uh, Very, very strange. And it was an odd situation there. I don't know what Luis did to get it. I don't know what he did to earn it. And it's just odd. And uh, Michael also says, yet we did not play well enough to win, fell apart when they pressed, and so wasteful with the ball in the final third. Uh, I think that if you watched Mo Adu on uh, the TV side, uh, Mo mentioned, especially at the half, just going ahead and uh, taking taking the opportunities when they're there and not worrying about the extra pass. And I think that there were a couple of situations where uh, that happened, or the pass was a little later than it should have been, and then you had a Toronto defender that was there standing in the way, so the pass wasn't completed, those kinds of things. And so, uh, yeah, early on, Michael, uh, Toronto FC really crammed and made uh, crammed the field and made it very, very cramped for Atlanta United to operate. And I think that, uh, once again, pressing and making it difficult for them, especially with Aiden McFadden coming in on the right-hand side and – you know, you work your way down your offensive left. You're working your way at McFadden, who is basically thrown into this lineup, and and they took advantage of that early on with a couple of chances. And so, yeah, I, like I said, Mo made the point. Uh, I think it was at halftime on the TV side about uh, the ball in the final third and just going ahead and and taking those chances when they're there in front of you. Uh, Team Doggo. Another injury season's done, so who cares what happens score-wise season's done, so it may as well just practice things. I would wholeheartedly disagree with you that the season is not done. We are barely, we're just shy of the halfway point. And the Eastern Conference is going to be incredibly competitive. And so right now, yes, I know that the next two matches on the road with Red Bulls and New York City are going to be difficult points. But it is a situation with... Uh, at Landy United, where you are in a conference right now, and this is as we're talking, and this is late night, early morning, Saturday, Sunday. You're looking at an Eastern Conference right now with Atlanta United in 10th place, 19 points matches in hand. Charlotte's at 20, Inter Miami's at 21, the Revs and FC Cincinnati are at 23, Orlando City at 25, uh, Philadelphia and Red Bulls at 26. So let's just go there. And CF Montreal is at 26 as well. So uh, if you take uh, matches in hand or if you sit there and you get, you know, two points, then you're working your way and you're inching your way up right now. You're looking at five points separating six from 12 right now in the Eastern Conference. And I think that it's going to be this way the entire season. I don't see any merit in just sitting there and saying just practice on things. The season is not over. The season is not even at the halfway point for Atlanta United right now. And with all of the injuries that we have all seen, for them to get to this point, I think it speaks a lot to uh, game planning and the build and the depth that was assembled so you could be in a situation like this. 
the East is going to be crazy, and that is what I would I would say is that the East is going to be crazy from beginning to end, and we're not even at the halfway point. So the fact that you want to throw in the towel now, uh, I, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that at all. And so it's just making sure that, once again, you try to get as healthy as possible, and the idea is to get into the playoffs, and then you make your noise. So right now, Atlanta, four points, and then they're in the playoffs, and then you make your noise. So four points to make up with the 20... 21 matches to go, I think that that's something that can be done. Just get into the playoffs, get healthy, get healthier, then you can get into the playoffs and do your damage. And I think that that's what uh, folks need to look at here when it comes to Atlanta United team, Doggo. Uh, Appreciate the conversations that you guys have been having uh, back and forth about the team so far to this point. Michael, your follow-up question, how how much different would that game have been with Almada? We needed someone to break down the central block. Uh, good McFadden and Heinemann, bad Campbell and Moreno. Happy birthday, uh, George. I, I thought that uh, I thought George had moments that obviously were going to frustrate some folks, but you saw once again how he was engaged and jumping into the play and almost working as a striker at points. But then, in the second half specifically, seeing those moments where you could switch the field. You could switch the, the the focus for Atlanta United going all the way from left to right, and he threw some tremendous uh, crosses from big switches from one end of the field to the other. So uh, I would, you know, look at uh, George Campbell as, yes, he had moments, but once again you look at things offensively and what he was able to do to create things out of transition, and I thought that he was once again continuing to add to his portfolio, and then he would double back on defense to help out on uh, Toronto Rushes. Uh, Mar- Marcelina Moreno, difficult for him to create tonight. There were those moments when he tried to create, but once again, you really saw a lot of bodies around him as he was trying to navigate and work as, as best he could. I think that when you saw Luis Arujo working down the right-hand side, specifically against Luca Petrasso. I thought that that was something that uh, Atlanta United saw in the second half and that they were really trying to press on, and Bob Bradley saw that too, thus the substitution of getting Petrasso out of there, knowing that Luis was really working the right channel and getting some opportunities for Atlanta United. Yes, McFadden, I agree with you there. And once again, Emerson Heinemann getting closer and closer to to full song as well, seeing him continue to get minutes out there and, and be that uh, catalyst in the midfield. Uh, I think it's it's good to see with uh, Emerson Heinemann getting healthy. Uh, yeah, I mean, to your point about Thiago Almada, you're looking at a team that was going to, with a one nothing lead, they were going to basically just kind of camp out in a low block and sit there and just, you know, pressure when you had the chance to. But if you've got a lead and you're – your lead's in the eighth minute. You're really not going to do a whole heck of a lot to try to uh, expand your advantage unless the situation really is there for you to do it in transition or something like that. So I think it would have been difficult no matter who was out there uh, in the match against Toronto. So that, uh, to John Nason's point, to Toronto FC, uh, pressed well. Atlanta's play out of the back became predictable and slow, exacerbating the issue. Shame the front four were hacked early and often, but often not good enough tonight. Worried now about the Red Bulls press. And that's his hashtag salty takeaway and bitter end. So, yeah, TFC did press well, especially out of the blocks when you were up 1-0, uh, making it difficult for you and uh, trying to create short fields and other opportunities there in the, in the first 45. But I think Atlanta United adjusted well in the second 45. And I think that that uh, helped change things as well and get the equalizer there. And then you had the, the deflection that made its way to Preso, who was at the top of the box, and he got it past Rocco for the 2-1 advantage with 12 to go. So, yeah, I mean, I would be worried about both Red Bulls and New York City. It's going to be tough places to play regardless, and we'll see how uh, Atlanta United adjusts and what the lineups look like, especially on, on uh, short rest. Marshall Voigt. Starting to feel like we're giving the other teams a two-goal handicap before we walk on the pitch. Three-plus goals are going to be the only way we will win games this year. I don't think that's necessarily true. But you cannot have the early turnovers that create opportunities for the opposition. And, you know, once again, you're talking about uh, back lines and familiarity and trying to work your way up 
uh, from the back line to the midfield, midfield up to the, the forwards. And we know what the forwards can do, as we saw against Inter-Miami. But, but I think that a lot of it just has to do with continuity and growth. And then, you know, Atlanta United tonight, they were slow coming out of the blocks. And there were passes that were not crisp, for lack of a better way of phrasing it. And it was a Toronto jumping into lanes and trying to take advantage of things in transition. So it's just being sure of yourself, being sure of your idea, making sure that things work their way forward in the best way that they can so you're not creating turnovers. And I think that early turnovers created short fields for Toronto to work their way toward uh, shots on Rocco Rios Novo. Uh, Abby, the ref not giving consistent calls and cards. Yes. Bradley should have gotten a yellow. Yes. Do we know passing percentages on our players Campbell and Moreno? So let's go to our friends at SofaScore and look at the passing numbers for those two specifically since those were the ones that you requested. So let's see, George Campbell on the day. Here's George's numbers, three clearances, a block, two interceptions, two tackles, one dribble pass. And we, we were talking about George Campbell, and this is uh, the numbers that uh, break down the kind of day that he had. I know that we're focused on certain moments. Uh, ground duels and aerials, he was four for four in the air tonight, uh, two for four on the ground, so six of eight overall. Passing. 45 of 55, 82% on 68 touches, 6 for 10 on his long balls. And that was a point that I was making uh, a little earlier on as well. One key pass, according to our friends at SofaScore. So 82% Abby for George Campbell on the day, playing out of the back. And Marcelino Moreno, 90 minutes, uh, 59 touches, 22 of 30 passing at 73%. Three key passes, three of nine on crosses, uh, Two shots off target, one blocked. Five of six on his dribbles, which once again, that's creating six chances for Atlanta United. Eight of 11 duels, one on the ground for Marcelino Moreno. So five of six on his dribbles, eight of 11 on his on his duels on the ground. 73% passing on 59 touches, 22 of 30. And so he was fouled three times, and uh, he, was, uh, he had one interception tonight as well. So Marcelino Moreno was fouled three times. Let's take a look at that number while we're, while we're focused on it here for a second. Joseph was at 80% passing on the day at uh, 12 of 15. Luis on the day was 15 of 22 passing, and he was fouled four times according to official numbers from SofaScore. Uh, also, Cisneros on the day. Let's take a look at his numbers. So, uh, Ronaldo Cisneros, 82% passing on 31 touches. So, Cisneros really wasn't all that active offensively. So, with uh, Arujo and Mar Marcelino Moreno, they were fouled seven times on the day. And they were the ones that ended up with yellow cards doing other things. So, uh, once again, your guess is as good as mine. Emma was fouled once. Franco Ibarra. Let's see. He was fouled twice on the day. Uh, Aiden McFadden, looking at numbers here, literally just burning through numbers. Aiden McFadden was fouled once. And let's see about George Campbell. Was he fouled? No, he was not. But, no, if you look at uh, two of your, your four up top, and they were fouled a total of seven times, and you only end up with uh, two yellow cards for – uh, Toronto FC, once again, it goes to the case that we've been building throughout the show. Uh, also on the Twitters as we go through, uh, once again, the, the conversation that all of you have been having about officiating uh, as well. I'm, I'm glad that you guys are having uh, the conversations that you are in and amongst each other. Um, and, oh, full credit goes to Bob Hewell for... Uh, his picture from right behind the Atlanta United bench. That's a really cool shot. Uh, Bob's salty takeaway is he thought Aiden McFadden played really well tonight after Brooks got injured in warm-ups. However, we just can't seem to catch a break in regards to injuries this season. You aren't kidding. Brooks was on the field on crutches after the game ended, so we'll keep an eye on that once again as well. So uh, thanks to everybody who contributed on uh, Twitter tonight for everything that uh, went on with Atlanta United. Let's talk about Atlanta United too before we go. So I guess this is a bit of a, a twos review also. It was a 3-1 loss in Oakland to Oakland Roots. And uh, on the day, it was a 1-0 uh, lead for 
uh, Oakland Roots. They scored. It was, I'm trying to work my way backwards here, 49th minute. Goalless at the half. Then it was uh, a goal for Oakland in the 49th minute that made it 1-0. And then you had a, a moment from Tristan Traeger, who he's been really fun to watch. Got the start tonight for Jack Collison in the twos. Then this moment happened in the 60th minute, courtesy of our friends at the USL Championship ESPN Plus and YouTube. With eight, he actually starts today for the first team as this ball's played centrally. Chance for Atlanta to pull one back. There's a goal for Atlanta United, too. Tristan Traeger equalizes. I kept reminding you how explosive this front line for Atlanta United, too. Brilliant individual work there for Mateus to pick out great first touch from Traeger like clockwork. Set him up for a second touch, which ends up in the back of the net. So Tristan Traeger gets his uh, goal for Atlanta United, too. And that evened it up at one goal apiece. And then I just, I'm, there was a moment in the 74th that I'm just going to sit there and say, I don't know what the official, the center ref thought he saw. I really don't. Uh, a foul call on Grant Howard inside the box was called a penalty. And you look at the replay, and I don't know where the foul was. I don't know. And Grant Howard got a card. I'd love to know why. But I don't know what the center ref saw. It didn't look like there was any contact whatsoever. Carlson clattered into Noah Cobb as Noah Cobb was trying to clear it. So the foul's called on Howard. Howard gets a yellow, turns into a, a penalty shout, and it goes uh, penalty kick 2-1 at that point in the 74th. And then just before we go was uh, another goal on the board in the 86th to make it 3-1 Johnny Hernandez, I think it was, who scored for Oakland Roots, uh, made they got the third goal on the board for them on the day. So it was a 3-1 win for Oakland Roots. Yeah, uh, Otter Magnus Carlson got his 11th on the year. Johnny Rodriguez uh, got the third goal on the board. So 3-1 win for Oakland Roots. Uh, once again, great effort by uh Atlanta United 2 in a very tough place to play. It's developing into a very tough place to play with uh, Oakland there at Laney Stadium. The, now the guys come all the way back to this side of the planet, and they're going to play uh, Charleston at Patriots Point in the midweek. Then they come back in a week's time, have El Paso Locomotive visit Fifth Third Bank Stadium. And then after that, on the 6th in the midweek, two weeks from now, Birmingham comes to town. So you've got... All of this activity happening in a very short period of time for Jack Collison and Atlanta United, too. And uh, I can't say enough about Grant Howard and what he did. I think it was uh, two goal line saves on the day. One kept it scoreless early in the first half. And then you had another opportunity that was uh, knocked away by uh, Grant Howard as well. So a big night for Grant Howard. Great to see him. Uh, do what he was able to do there at the back line for uh, Atlanta United too. Going through the stats in the 3-1 win for uh, Atlanta United 2, shots on the day, 29-5 to for Oakland. And so Oakland had, wow, 29 shots. I did not realize that they had 29 shots. You watch a match, and then you look at the numbers, and you go, wow. Uh, so let's take a peek at the uh, other stats on the board. Uh, was uh, two shots on target for Atlanta United, two 46% possession, 13 fouls compared to 19 for Oakland. Sounds familiar. Four yellow cards, by the way, on the 13 fouls, four yellows for Atlanta United, two no yellows for Oakland on their 19 fouls. And let's, uh, you know, you look at the uh, details there as well. So uh, cards to Centeno, Nelson Orji. Grant Howard and a Johnny Fortune on the day, and the goal went to Tristan Traeger. So, three-one uh, win for Oakland Roots. Atlanta United two, coming back home and playing in the midweek. So we'll see what uh, the twos look like when they head to Patriots Point. Your Sofa Score ratings on the day: Darwin Mateus had the highest rating for uh, Sofa Score at a seven point four for uh, Atlanta United. And for Atlanta United 2. And so right now, you look in the east, Atlanta United 2 with 10 points. Right now, they are a point ahead of Charleston, who's played one less match. And so we'll see what happens there 
on the midweek. So thanks a lot for everybody hanging out on this hybrid version of Salty Takeaways and Bitter Ends because I think it was a little bit of both for both the twos and Atlanta United. We'll be going back over this on Monday as well. Uh, Jason is filling in on the midday, Monday and Tuesday. So Jarrett and I will be taping stuff. We'll be taping an hour's worth of material on Monday. Dylan Butler will be joining us on Tuesday. So you'll be getting taped content released late in the morning on Monday and Tuesday, back to normal on uh, Wednesday, I think, before uh, Jason heads up to New York for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday shows. Remember, the Red Bulls match is Thursday night. And the match against NYC is on Sunday afternoon at 5 o'clock at, uh, I think it's Yankee Stadium, at least right now I think it's Yankee Stadium, on July 3rd for Atlanta United and uh, NYC. Very busy night across the board. Thanks to everybody who was a part of this on uh, Salty Takeaways Bitter Ends. Thanks for uh, joining us on Twitter. Thanks for hanging out with us, however you are doing so, every single time of the week. Play it safe, everybody. We'll see you Monday. Thanks for hanging out with us here on Salty.